Hong Kong is an urban jungle. On the forest floor, a tightly wound series of interlinked alleyway-style routes allow workers to scuttle, glide and clamber from neighbourhood to neighbourhood. A canopy of elaborate signage and cloth awnings offer shade to big cats and worker bees alike. And high above, trunk-like skyscrapers shoot out of the dense foliage, grasping for daylight. And the entire ecosystem is cradled and ultimately bordered by a cluster of lush and verdant hills. Nowhere in this city personifies this tortured metaphor more aptly than Hong Kong Island. It is home to the business district, a one-of-a-kind transport system, and many a site, historical, cultural, and just straight vibey. We'll be exploring every nook and cranny of this area today, guided by Jack, who, it is important to add, has never been to this area before. After a cheeky coffee and a nutritious breakfast, we jumped on the Star Ferry, which links the areas of West Kowloon and Hong Kong Central. This iconic service is popular with both commuters and tourists alike, and oh my gosh, is it a vibe. Jackie boy, which way? Right, I think we need to walk about a kilometre this way to reach our first point and then we're going to walk back. Watch the lampers! <laughs> this is why I don't normally lead uh, the proceedings. Damn right. So today is going to be an interesting day because Jack usually films and I usually navigate. So I don't know how this is going to work out, you know? Jack might be bad at navigation, but his redeeming quality is that he is quite good at coming up with talking points even when walking down a seemingly mundane street. Red and silver Toyota taxis are such a distinctive symbol of Hong Kong. They're always absolutely spotless, always gleaming and shimmering in the sun, and the drivers really seem to take a lot of pride in them. At every opportunity, they'll be stopped and they'll have their rag out and they'll be giving them a good little polish. Agreed. Give us another pearl of wisdom, Jack. If you do see a public restroom, go use it, even if you don't need it, because there is a distinct lack of public toilets in this city. Yeah, we, we had to use a lot of McDonald's yesterday. <laughs> right, which way? So I think now we need to maybe head up here and then go like this and then that and then that and then this and then we'll get to our destination. I say we just go for it. I'm sure we'll come across something interesting. I've never seen a double-decker tram before, I'm so excited. <laughs> Man, I'm absolutely buzzing about these trams. Do you think we'll have time to go on one later? But before we worry about tram rides, I think we need to find something a little bit more substantial to eat. Hopefully we can find some tasty local grub. So the markets certainly look a little bit fancier on this side of the harbour. I think we'll give this one a miss because it's probably a bit out of our price range. Okay, quick vibe update. We just turned a corner. Things are looking a little bit more up our street. I think we might be able to find some lunch that we could afford around here. This says cooked food centre, so I'm assuming that's going to have some good cooked food, Jack. But as is often the case in Hong Kong, finding the entrance ain't an easy feat. Oh my gosh, this is like the cutest little escalator. Escalator for one. Best place is always up a vibey staircase. Oh, hello. Well, I think we found our cooked food centre. Now to decide what to actually get. It's all in Chinese and I and my um, WeChat doesn't work because I've got no signal. Luckily, Jack has a special technique which allows him to order without a menu. When you're faced with an overwhelming menu that you can't understand, sometimes the best way to choose is just look around, see what people are eating and point and say, I want me a bit of that. Hello. Hello. Is there curry noodle from here? Um, yeah. Yeah. Can can I get two curry noodle? Two vegetable ones. Yeah, is, is that, that okay? okay? Vegetable Thank curry noodles. You. You know. Uh, yes, yeah, some tea. What are these drinking? Lemon tea? Yeah. Lemon tea. Two, Two lemon, lemon teas. teas. Thank you. 
is so refreshing. So another good way of deciding where to eat in a place like this is look for where's busy because then you know it's a good place. Ah, I'm so excited for a proper meal. Wow, that looks good. Definitely needs a bit of a mix in. When we were having a look around, you know, everybody had quite tasty things, but they these did jump out at me because girl loves noodles, girl loves curry. Curry noodles? Okay, let's try it. Mm. Oh, it tastes almost like katsui. It's like a really, really tiny bit sweet, but it's just got this like really nice peppery flavor. Really good. It's not too overwhelming. It's got kind of like a creaminess, but yet also simultaneously light. Fresh, the veggies really uh, help to lighten up the dish. Perfect fuel for some exploration. Are you saving okay. that bit for later, Jack? Well, it's a good job neither of us are wearing white today because my lips and my hands are stained yellow. Mine too. It was definitely worth it though. Back to the task at hand. Jack, where are we going? Oh, I think it's somewhere up this way, but I'm not gonna lie, noodles for lunch made me kind of sleepy still. I'm not sure I'm gonna be the best tour guide. Oh dear. Keep watching guys, this is going to be a fun vlog. Fortunately here in Hong Kong, there's help around every corner. Alright, 7-Eleven to the rescue. Ah, that's better. Now let's go get this walking tour. Jeez, you can tell someone's had a coffee. Jack, why have we uh, stopped at this uh, signpost? Well, Nico, it may just look like an ordinary street to you, but it's actually got a very deep significance. Do you know what it is? No. OK, basically, this was the point, more or less, where the British actually raised a Union Jack, planted it in the ground, and uh, declared their possession of Hong Kong Island. Obviously, a very significant event that would go on to shape the future of Hong Kong. Ah, I guess that's why it's called Possession Street. Looking at it today, it just looks like an ordinary street not the site of one of the most important and controversial events in the city's history. Having spent the previous day exploring the gritty back streets of Kowloon, the quirky and upmarket alleys of Hong Kong Central make for quite the contrast. I definitely feel like there's different vibes on either side of the sea. This side feels a little bit more hipstery and a lot more expensive. Fortunately, our primary mode of transport today is our feet, which don't cost nothing. So wifey, after all this walking, you look like you're in need of some zen. Am I right? <laughs> I'm always in need of some zen, Jack. Which is why I brought you to Taiping Shan Street, which is the next stop on our walking tour. Okay. And basically, nestled amongst all these super tall buildings are actually some really cute little temples, apparently. So let's see if we can go find some. Here's one. Here's another one. And Jack's favourite temple was... I feel like these tiles perfectly match my socks. Jack may be a floor fan, but I am a wall worshipper. Not a temple, but this is cute street art. Jack, be careful. So wifey, in the space of just 200 metres, we have transitioned from religious relics to architectural relics and antiquities. And everything you see here is for sale and does have a price. So let's go check out the Upper Lascar Road. Hey, I'm always down for a retail opportunity. Why are you like this one? Yeah, man. So yesterday you were moaning on that there weren't enough signs anymore, so I decided to buy you a picture. Yeah, boy. Okay, okay. I'm liking this walking tour so far. A little bit of architecture, a little bit of art, and a little bit of antiques. That's my kind of day well spent. Love it. Love it. Where do you now then? All right, stop number four, and I think I can spy it out of the corner of my eye. So I brought Wifey to this amazing looking temple with these beautifully coloured jade green tiles, but not gonna lie, she seems more interested in this uh, funky building up there. I love it, it looks well cool. But I will go have a nosy around inside the temple whilst Jack shoots some B-roll. Oh, a bit too much incense for me. Give me a bit of a headache, but I think I need a drink and a piece of cake. Is that on the itinerary? Well, either way, 
I'm making Jack have it. Well, this had a little cupcake sign on the map, but alas, it is a restaurant and not a cafe or a cake shop. So the cake quest continues. Let's just have a quick look on this street. So our cake quest has led us down this dark, dingy alleyway. Please don't give up on the cake quest, Jack. Anyway, let's put the cake debacle behind us and get back to our scheduled route because I've still got a few more exciting stops for us to pack in. But I just want the cake. This way, wifey. This way, wifey. Ooh, a park. I am partial to a sit down. So Hong Kong has a bit of a reputation of being an urban jungle, which means you're more likely to see an overhead canopy made of electrical wires than foliage. But that being said, there are some lovely little green spaces hidden around the city in case you need a bit of refreshment. This is the Pax Lane Park. Not quite sure how you pronounce that, so any guidance would be appreciated in the comments. What do you reckon, Nico? Well, I think it's really nice to have areas that you can come and have a rest. You know, I love a sit down, but I definitely feel like they could have arranged it so it was maybe either a little bit greener. At the minute, I think it looks a little bit like an art exhibition. There's quite a lot of white walls. So if you're after a bit of color, then I think our next spot's gonna to appeal to you. Wow, great segue, Jack. Guys, it's amazing how fast Hong Kong changes. Literally 25 meters away from the park, and we're back in some super vibey local feeling streets. Yeah, it's very bustling compared to that peaceful park. Now I'm intrigued as to what the next spot is. So for the next stop on the walk-in tour, I brought you to the Graham Street artwork, which is an amazing depiction of old school, southern Chinese style Tong Lo buildings and houses. What do you reckon, Nico? Well, I love artwork in different cities and I like to go around and explore it, see as much as I can. This area kind of reminds me of when we visited Valparaiso in Chile because it's very similar vibes. It's very hilly, it's got loads of artwork everywhere and it's just like feels really nice and creative. So this is a cool mural and all, but I feel like I've subjected Wifey to quite a lot of walking over the last couple of days. So maybe we should reward her with a nice tram ride. What do you reckon, Wifey? Yeah, let's go. Although Wifey is still mad that you haven't yet supplied her with any cake, Jack. I guess I'll just have to make do with the second best thing. Is it the best pizza I've ever had? No, but I'm hungry and it's really tasty. And for dessert, let's return to 7-Eleven for the 711th time today. Okay, there's no cake, but I'm going to try these biscuits instead that I wanted to try. Um, I was really disappointed, actually. It's got so much potential. But look at how much biscuits inside. I want more caramel and chocolate. Oh, man. Today is not my cake day. Well, hopefully the tram ride will be less disappointing. Definitely busier than earlier. Probably shouldn't have come at Rush Hour for the romantic tram ride that I hoped about. But Jack was in a more upbeat mood for once. This isn't just a tourist attraction, this is a real living piece of infrastructure. And it's kind of made me think, maybe we need to come back and make an infrastructure video showing all of the amazing ways that we can get around, such as... The cable car, the tram, the bus, the metro. Gosh, it's, the list goes on forever. So guys, if you want to see that, leave us a comment below and we'll try and come back to Hong Kong to make that for you. So guys, catch you in the next one. Bye. P.S. Don't forget to subscribe because we've got some absolute fire videos dropping soon. Bye!